Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this session. Um, so, in the previous lecture, uh, we have covered uh, different components of bank's balance sheet and we covered each and every component of bank's liability side and then we started discussing bank's asset sides. So, in the bank assets, we have covered reserves, securities, cash items in process of collection and deposit other banks. So, the remaining are uh, loans and other assets. So, coming to this first part the loans, this is an important activity of a bank. So, bank make their profits primarily by issuing loan. A loan is an asset for a bank because it provides uh, income to the bank and at the same time it is a liability for the individual or corporation receiving it. So, typically a bank loan is less liquid than other assets because uh, they cannot be turned into cash until the loan matures and also have a higher probability of default than other assets. And because of their lack of liquidity and their higher default risk, uh, the bank earns its highest return on loans. So, this topic that the, um, uh, when the risk is very high, we have covered in the previous sessions. That means, higher the risk and higher will be the return normally for those who issue uh, this kind of security. Right. So, in the, because of that, banks earns its highest return on loans. And as we discussed in the previous session, that is, uh, there is interbank loans as well. And so, these are all the components of loans in the uh, asset side of bank balance sheet. And coming to other assets, other assets include the physical capital owned by banks and is included in the other assets category. The examples of other assets are mainly bank building, uh, computers and other equipments. And yeah, so we have covered the different components of bank's balance sheet, the asset side and the liability side. And in this session, we will be focusing now more on and how the basic banking. So, this we will be explaining using a T account and what is a T account means? A T account is a simplified balance sheet uh, with the lines in the form of a T that lists only the changes that occur in the balance sheet items starting from some initial balance sheet positions. So, using this T account, we will now start uh, how a bank function, what are the basics of banking. So, let us start with uh, different scenarios. One scenario, one option here is that uh, someone deposit some cash with a bank. Then how does the T account of a bank look like? So, you just imagine that means you deposited uh, dollar, 100 dollar with the bank. So, in this scenario, what is going to happen? So, how does the asset and liabilities of this T account changes? So, you can notice from this uh, table that means uh, the world cash is increased to 100 dollar and the world cash uh, the is increased. But Im importantly, first we need to say somebody deposited this cash deposit that the checkable deposit. So, it is a liability. Immediately, there will be an increase of 100 dollar checkable deposit that the liability for the bank and same time this cash it is with the bank now is a world cash and this is how the T account of this bank change. That means, the asset there is an increase of 100 dollar and in the liability side also you can see the checkable deposit has increased by 100 dollar. 
So, opening a checking account leads to an increase in the bank reserves equal to the increase in checkable deposits. And we are actually going to say that this world cash which I put assets here actually later on we will study in, in detail that means world cash is also part of reserves. So, you can now look at the bank's T account it look like this the assets that it became reserve increased by $100 and checkable deposit also increased by $100. This is scenario 1 and scenario 2 see that um, a bank is receiving a deposit, someone is depositing a, a check with a bank. So, in this case immediately how does the T account look like? So, you can see that immediately on the asset side you can see that the cash items in process of collection, cash items in process of collection that means $100 it increases and uh, that means immediately this much amount uh, it will be credited as a deposit in the name of the person who deposit this check and you can also see that uh, the liability of the bank also increases, liability of the bank also increases by $100. So, what you can see here that means when a bank receives additional deposits it gains an equal amount of reserves, when it loses deposit it loses an equal amount of reserves. So, this one we convert again in the form of uh, assets and liabilities you can see that the cash items in process of collection so it subsequently is going to become reserves when they get this money this $100 become reserves for this bank and it also as we may shown in the previous table that means it also become a liability. So, the T account what I am showing you here in the first table immediately by someone depositing this check here the asset and liabilities changes in this way that means cash items in process of collection and checkable deposit. And subsequently uh, this one will become reserves when they collect this money this will become reserves and again this checkable deposit is already in their name. So, in name of the depositor so it will be checkable deposits. What would happen to the second bank who issued this check? So, in you can see that in their account they are actually losing $100 because the first uh, table that we see cash items in process of collection once it is collected this bank's reserve the second bank who issued this check uh, their reserves declined by $100 and they also lose uh, the checkable deposits of $100. So, you know that uh, all this transaction it happens to the central bank through the Fed or through the RBI. So, between these two bank actually who issued this check and with the bank where this was deposited. So, all these transactions it happened through the central bank. So, now let us see that uh, how, how does a bank make profit by a very 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 simple example uh, illustration we are going to show that how does a bank make profit. So, you can see that uh, in the case of the first bank the reserves has increased by $100 and we also see that the liabilities has increased by $100. So, for this bank no point of keeping this money idle here because you can see that this bank can make invest this money elsewhere and make profit. And not only that when someone is depositing this $100 this bank is liable to pay interest income and plus also incur other costs for example, in terms of servicing this deposit. So, in this case what this bank will do? So, this bank because we also seen that every bank uh, scheduled bank when they get deposit be it time deposit or demand deposit they have to keep certain fraction of their deposit with the banking central bank. So, in this case assume that the required cash reserve ratio is 10 percentage suppose in that case what this bank will do uh, this bank now let us see how does this bank's T account look like. So, on the asset side you can see that suppose if they have to keep 10 percentage that means uh, they have to keep dollar uh, 10 with the central bank. So, the remaining one remaining is uh, 90 dollar. So, for the moment let us call it as excess reserve. 
suppose they are not utilizing this money so the moment they got the deposit 10 percent they kept with the central bank so the remaining one is excess reserve and as we may shown before the um, time uh, liabilities is stackable deposit is remaining 100 dollar so for a bank because it is also a firm it also want to make profit they won't keep this excess reserve simply with the central bank instead they prefer to employ this fund and in order to they will be lending this money because this is a liability a liability they got through the check up that in through the checkable deposit now we put it on the asset side and now they will be uh, utilizing employing this money how they will do so let us take a simple sim very simple case that means this bank is going to lend this money instead of keeping excess reserve immediately they will be lending this money to someone so in this process you can also see that what we discuss here is that actually this bank got uh, 100 dollar deposits out of this uh, 10 percentage is kept with the uh, as a required reserve and remaining 90 in this example illustration they are they gave it as loan so this actually uh, what the bank did here is nothing but asset transformation that means selling liabilities that the checkable deposit with one set of characteristics that we discussed previously that the liquidity risk size and return now this one using these proceeds using these proceeds they buy assets with a different set of characteristics this is nothing but um, loan they are actually buying assets that means loans they are buying that means they are giving loans so in this process uh, this actually called the asset transformation and in this process banks make profit and you can also see here that this process that means bank borrow short because checkable deposit these are uh, borrowing short and uh, because you can withdraw suppose if you uh, this the checkable deposit belong to you you can withdraw at any time that means bank is borrowing you for short term and in they then using this proceed bank will be lending it for long term so this is how a simple functioning simple way of uh, to understand how a bank function let's now move to uh, different aspects of bank functioning and in this process that the asset transformation and banks functioning what are the various principles a bank need to take care of so there are different principles primarily four main principles so we will be discussing these uh, principles one by one the first one is called liquidity management liquidity management and this is called means simply saying that actually ensuring enough ready cash with the bank and then comes asset management that means low rate of default risk then coming to liability management that is called um, acquiring funds at low cost then the last one is uh, capital adequacy management and subsequently what we will also do that um, we will make some in-depth discussion of credit risk and interest rate risk as well okay so now uh, we are going to focus more on the first principle that is called liquidity management how does a bank ensure that uh, what are the considerations a bank should do to ensure that uh, there is enough ready cash with the banks that means a, a deposit is approach a bank for withdrawing a deposit at that time there should be sufficient fund with the in the with the banking banks in order to honor uh, the deposit is withdrawal request so that is the our focus now so liquidity management suppose when there is a sudden outflow of deposits at that time how does uh, a bank ensure uh, there is sufficient uh, fund or liquidity is there and this we are actually seeing that how do a bank ensure sufficient liquidity with the bank and in this case we discuss uh, various scenario in which a bank can ensure that there is sufficient liquidity so let's first look into the role of reserves in ensuring liquidity management 
So, look at this table, what you can see here that a, how does a bank, this bank's balance sheet look like. So, on the asset side, uh, we have mentioned reserves worth uh, 20 million and loans worth uh, 80 million, securities worth 10 million. Securities means investment in bonds, government securities, etc. And on the liability side, they have a deposits of 100 million and bank capital is 10 million. And here as per law, as per the central bank requirement, the required reserve ratio is for example, 10 percentage only. So, if 10 percentage is the required reserve ratio and you know that 10 million is the deposit with this bank, you know the 10 percentage of this one, actually the bank is required to keep only 10 million, only 10 million it is required to keep CRR, uh, but what the bank has done here? So, here the bank has kept uh, 20 million, that means 10 million in excess. And you know that when bank is keeping excess reserve, actually bank is keeping excess reserve of 10 million. And obviously, you know that when bank is keeping excess reserve, actually they are foregoing interest income. Actually, they could have utilized this money for making other investment, giving loan or making any, any other kind of investment. But instead, this bank is keeping 20 million and loans they have given only 80 million and securities they invested only 10 million. And in this case, what is going to happen? If suppose if there is a sudden deposit outflow of 10 million, for example. So, in this case, what is going to happen? So, you know that if there is a sudden deposit outflow of 10 million, obviously you know that this one will come down um, because here we have seen that 10 million uh, outflow has happened, uh, 10 million of deposit outflow has happened. So, as a result the remaining deposit is only 90 million. So, how do suppose how do this bank honor this sudden deposit outflow of 10 million? So, because you see that immediately they can take it from the excess reserve, excess reserve it may be kept with the central bank or in the form of world cash. So, this 10 million they will be taking it from uh, this from here this excess reserve, then the reserve now declined to 10 million. Right. So, you can see here that actually now in the new scenario the loans because loan they did not touch because we cannot a bank cannot call back a loan easily and securities also they did not touch. What this bank has done that in order to meet this uh, uh, sudden deposit outflow they have taken money from uh, this excess reserve. So, now because deposit has come down to 90 million. 90 million and you know the 10 percent of 90 million they have to keep only uh, 9 million only right. Again there is some 1 of 1 million dollar excess reserve is there. So, this is one scenario that means keeping excess reserve if a bank has ample excess reserve a deposit outflow does not necessitate changes in other parts of its balance sheet. So, they can easily honor uh, the withdrawal request from depositors, they can easily give. Uh, however, uh, in the subsequent next session we will be covering, it has some cost, some opportunity cost mainly because keeping money in excess reserve, there is an opportunity cost of foregoing income, that means foregoing investment of this fund, that opportunity cost is there. But for the moment we are just focusing on liquidity management then saying that keeping excess reserve, it works as a cushion against uh, sudden deposit outflow. And suppose take another scenario, uh, polar opposite scenario that means there is no excess reserve at all. So, look at this bank balance sheet, again we have deposits of 100 million and obviously you know that if the 10 percentage is the required reserve, they have to keep 10 million dollar as reserve. This is actually uh, CRR, cash reserve requirement is uh, 10 million, they are keeping 10 million there as excess reserve. And again what we discussed previously shown previously 90 million uh, as loans, uh, securities as 10 million. So, in this scenario suppose there is a sudden 
deposit outflow of 10 million what will this bank do so you can see that now the anyway they have to give 10 million immediately they will be giving 10 million from the reserve reserve they have the required reserve that is with the central bank right this money with the central bank as the deposit and immediately they will be taking that money and giving to the uh, depositor when he comes to the bank approach the bank for my de uh, deposit withdrawal so you can see that reserve has now become zero because you see this is actually a legal requirement the shortfall must be eliminated so there are certain uh, instruction that um, instructions are there uh, requirements are there at the end of the business day this uh, 10 percentage reserve requirement should be with the central bank but now this bank uh, they, are, they are they don't have any other option from this example they have to take immediately this reserve uh, using that the bank is giving uh, honoring the 10 million dollar 10 million withdrawal now the you can see that the deposit has come down to 90 million and um, now they have to keep uh, 9 million as 9 million they have to keep as uh, required reserve but the moment they have zero reserve so you can see that this is one so that x in that way what we have shown here is that uh, excess reserve they have to keep normally banks keep as an insurance against the cost associated with the deposit outflow so how to manage this situation this situation how to manage because you know that bank they have to keep 90 million 90 million they have to keep because this previous scenario this zero this is not acceptable they have to keep uh, 10 percent that the 9 million they have to keep so in order to do that uh, reserve one option is uh, bank will be borrowing bank will borrow from other banks or borrow from the central bank itself that is one option so what are the costs involved so that as a result you know that the required reserve that the 10 percent day that the 9 million it compensated it actually uh, raised this much fund from through borrowing that is one option and you know what is the cost incurred uh, cost incurred is the interest rate that interest income paid on the borrowed funds right so that is one cost included option number two look at uh, these securities they have they are keeping 9 million as the securities government up in government bonds suppose and what they can do they can sell it and get 9, 9 million and using that um, now they can uh, meet the reserve requirement and however the cost of selling securities is the brokerage and other transaction cost plus what is the ongoing market rate market uh, price of this security they have to sell at the given market price right so maybe at that time maybe the uh, security price may be low maybe may in that way maybe the bank may be incurring some losses third option um, is to borrow from federal reserve that means borrowing from the central bank so in this case you can see that this 9 million they are getting it from uh, borrowing from the fed or borrowing from the central bank that is in the case of uh, rbi in indian case and again uh, you can see that borrowing from the fed it also incurs uh, interest payments based on the discount rate these are this is the third option for borrowing for this bank and the fourth option you can now see that um, initially we have seen that this bank is having 90 million as the loan 90 million as the loan in this in their asset side now the fourth option is that because in order to meet in order to get this 9 million bank has to one option is that bank can call back 9 million from their loan portfolio uh, that is one option however you know that that is not so easy that means the bank has given loan to business firms government and consumers maybe education loan and in order to in order to purchase consumer durables and all so now the government this bank is facing an emergency to meet a liquidity issue to meet fund scarcity to meet the liquidity requirement suppose if they do 
और रेज दिस फंड बाई कॉलिंग बैक नाइन मिलियन लोन मे बी वन ऑप्शन कॉलिंग बैक और अदरवाइज इफ देर इज ए लोन ऑलरेडी ड्यू फॉर रिन्यूवल बैंक वॉन्ट बी रिन्यूविंग इट इन दिस सीनेरियो यू नो दैट बैंक विल बी वैंक कैन डू बट एक्चुअली रिडक्शन ऑफ लोन्स इज द मोस्ट कॉस्टली वे ऑफ अक्यूरिंग रिसोर्स यू नो वाई बिकॉज कॉलिंग इन लोन्स एंड ऑर्गेनाइज कस्टमर्स and not only that is not guarantee that uh, you can call because loans are given on an agreement right there is a term will be there maybe one year or five year or 10 years like that so at that time a bank cannot easily call back the loans uh, for its purpose in order to meet the reserve requirement it will antagonizes um, the customers and similarly if they are not renewing the loan suppose the bank is not renewing the loan it actually affects the um, loyal customers because customers are being at trust on their banks that means uh, when they make timely repayment of their loan it will be automatically renewed right a guaranteed renewal is there but if bank works against this and that also further antagonizes uh, the customers and the second option is loan resale loan resale that means Uh, uh, reselling resale of this loan but you know that again this is a costly proposition because other banks may only agree to purchase the loans at a substantial discount right so this is also has its own cost and um, its own demerits as well so the topics that we have covered so far is the liquidity management and now next part of bank management principle is the asset management so we will be discussing here uh, what are the different uh, principles or aspects involved in the asset management and mainly a bank when is acquiring uh, more assets it will be keeping three principle three goals in mind one is it needs it would like to earn highest possible return on assets that means suppose a loan loan is an asset so in that case the bank would like to uh, earn uh, highest possible return on their assets and bank also want to reduce risk the default risk they want to reduce and it also need to ensure that uh, it has adequate liquidity with the bank the assets that they are acquiring it is actually uh, sufficient liquidity is also involved with that these are the three goals so in order to in this process they use mainly four tools one is find borrowers who will pay high interest rates and have low possibility of defaulting and second tool is purchase securities with high returns and low risk the tool is lower risk by diversifying that means not putting all x in one basket and the last tool is a uh, balancing a balance in the need for liquidity versus increase returns from less liquid assets so so that it can satisfy the cash requirement without bearing huge cost okay so in the next session we will cover the liability management aspects thank you